On today's episode of Undercover Boss, the CEO of 7-Eleven, one of the largest convenience stores in the world, goes undercover. This boss will trade in his executive office and personal golf course for a mop and a pot of joe. He will assume a new identity and pose as a new recruit, and by working on the front lines, he will find out what's really going on inside his company. We have to get rid of these old donuts. Those items are supposed to be going to charities. I don't understand it. We've got to fix that. Stay with us to find out how his employees will react when they finally find out that he's been the boss all along. I'm the CEO uh, here at 7-Eleven. Get out and die. Uh, <laughs> you're the big shot. <laughs> Headquartered in Dallas, Texas, 7-Eleven has over 36,000 stores worldwide. Overseeing this $17 billion business and its 200,000 plus employees is CEO Joe DePinto. 7-Eleven was founded 82 years ago and they use a franchise model whereby they partner with independent operators and they disseminate their products and 7-Eleven supports them with their support staff in Dallas. Joe is originally from Chicago and he started his first job delivering newspapers when he was just 13 years old. Joe was a very hard worker and worked his way up to the top. He's also served in the military and time he spent in the army taught him how to lead people and he's taken that lesson and brought it into his business. Joe's mission is to grow 7-Eleven to new heights and to achieve this, he wants to see how things are run starting from the distribution centers to the stores and that's why he's going undercover. I think they're going to be really surprised when I tell them what I'm about to do. He'll be going undercover as Danny Rossi, a former real estate agent that's looking for new opportunities in other fields. My cover story is that I used to be in real estate, I'm out of work, and I'm looking for new opportunities. His employees will be told that he's getting filmed by a documentary crew as he's trying out entry-level jobs at some of the biggest businesses in America. For his first job, he travels to Shirley, New York to work in one of the most successful stores in the city. This store sells more than 2,500 cups of coffee every day, more than any other store in the world, and he wants to find out why. Is it the location? Is it the type of coffee? I need to figure out what makes their coffee business so great so I can share it with our other stores. He meets up with the coffee maker Dolores, who teaches him how to filter and make coffee. The store is super busy, so they have to work really fast, but he ends up mixing two different kinds of coffee and ruining an order. You just mixed it with the French vanilla for the decaf hazelnut. Oh, uh, yes I did. But fortunately, Dolores was patient with him and helps him do a lot better. While working, he notices Dolores knows almost all of the customers, and she's got a great relationship with them, and she treats them like family. Hey, Ma. Hiya, Nikki. Is he your son? No, he's a customer. She tells him she's been working there for 18 years and has gotten to know everyone very well. He also learns from a customer that she only has one kidney and that she's on dialysis twice a week, and she won't let her kids donate because she's afraid something bad will happen to them. Finding out about Dolores really hit me pretty hard. She seems to have so much energy and, and she's so positive about things. For his next job, he travels to Baltimore, Maryland to work in the largest bakery in the state. I'll be looking at quality assurance and in particular be working on the line with some of our uh, employees. And there he meets up with the head of trainees, Phil. Phil takes him inside the factories and teaches him how to make dough for donuts. He then teaches him how to make filters, which Joe struggles with and forces Phil to come back and finish the job for him. This is a tough job. You know, trying to keep up with Phil was very difficult. Later on their break, Joe learns Phil was also in the military and joined the company 8 years ago. He also learns that Phil likes to draw and some of his drawings are actually hung in the break room. <laughs> Phil's a funny guy and he works really hard. He's also a really talented guy. The next day, he travels back to Milford, New York to work in the night shift and one of the hardest things for 7-Eleven has been finding great people to work in the night shift. These are the folks that are really the anchor for 7-Eleven and allow us to be a 24-7 business. So he wants to meet some of them and find out what could help them so that others will join too. He meets up with Wakas and he instructs them on how to clean up and take out the trash. He then works in the cash register, but Joe was so sleepy as he's never worked this time and night before. Wakas seeing this thinks that the best way to keep him awake is to give him more work. Mr. Danny seems like a nice guy, but he wasn't working very hard. So he starts making him do all the jobs, from cleaning the store to stocking the product to greeting the customers and working in the cash register. Joe then watches Wakas throwing out one day old donuts and this really upsets him as all unsold donuts should be given to charity. 7-Eleven has several programs for perishable food items and those items need to be going to charities not being thrown in the garbage. For his next job, Joe travels to Long Island, New York. 
There he meets up with the owner Lori and she teaches him on how to clean the windows and she also tells him to call the maintenance because a lot of light bulbs are not working. Uh, Lori said that you have some lights out on the inside of the store and then all the lights in the back room are out. Corporate always covers maintenance, but she tells him that they haven't been there in three weeks. He then calls and reports the problem, but he is told that they'll be coming in a month. This really frustrates him, and he goes outside and calls the COO to tell him to fix the problem immediately. I made a call, and Lori's gonna get a nice surprise because her lights are gonna get fixed really quickly. For his last job, he travels to Dallas, Texas to work as a delivery driver. I'm looking forward to spending time with these folks tonight. Hey guys, I'm looking for uh, Igor. Igor. Are you Igor? There he meets up with Igor and they load the truck with the products together and they go on the road and deliver the products to stores. I'm enjoying this a lot. This guy's energetic, enthusiastic, positive. He's the kind of guy we need to have working for us. But a problem arises for Joe as their next destination was inside his neighborhood. And if the people that work there see him, they will for sure find out that it's Joe. I was helping back up the truck to the store, and I saw the franchisee in the store who I know. He manages to avoid being seen by saying that he needs to go to the bathroom and waiting out there. I wanted to make sure that I didn't blow my cover, so I told Igor that I was going to use the restroom. Until Igor finishes up. Joe's undercover time has finally come to an end. Now my week undercover has come to an end, and I'm going to report back to our executive committee and tell them all that I've learned and he invites his employees to his office to reveal his true identity. First in was Wukas, and he tells them that he was impressed with him working at night and going to school during the daytime, and he then offers to be his mentor to help him get into a better position when he finishes school. He cares about me, and uh, he's my mentor for my life, and that makes me like more confident that I'll be successful in my life. Next in was Phil, and he tells him that he was a great teacher, and that he loved his art, and he then tells Phil that he will be getting a job as a freelance illustrator for his next marketing campaign. We got two of my eyes right now, I'm trying to try not to let it come out. Next in was Igor, and he tells him that he was a great worker and he had a lot of fun working with him, and he then offers to send him and his family to a fully paid vacation. And after that it was Dolores, and he tells her that he really enjoyed working with her the most, and that he was impressed with her great relationship with customers, and he then tells her that he will start an organ donor program throughout the company so that her and people like her could get kidneys faster. Sometime later, Joe invites his employees to a town hall meeting to share his experience while he was undercover, and by the end, he promises to improve the company for everyone involved. I work every day as CEO in our company, so thank you. And in the week since, Wakas was moving up at 7-Eleven and he's now become a field consultant and will be responsible for 10 franchises. Phil has been hired as a freelance illustrator by 7-Eleven's ad agency and inspired by Dolores, the company has donated $150,000 to a kidney foundation in her name. And Joe has recently presented Igor with his own 7-Eleven store and he is now his own boss. And this is how today's episode of Undercover Boss wraps up. 